Coming from the Caveman Studios in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to Caveman Corner with your host, Jeff. Captain Caveman! Thanks. Click subscribe and the bell. Do it now! I'm here with the one and the only Mike Stevens. Welcome to our show, man. Fans are clamoring to get you back on. I wanted to get you on since the FCP fights. You're fighting in Germany. We have a lot of things to talk about. First of all, where's your pizzeria hat? Oh, man, I got a brain at nuts time. I think my kid took it, man. I got a little three-year-old running around here somewhere, but uh, he, he definitely took it. But I still got to get you a menu, man. Next time uh, you bring me to the gym, I'd love to come back down. I, I got to bring down the menu, so I was just over there. Yeah, so, man, anytime you're in that, in that area, come on by, man. We, we always love to have you. Sammy's Pizzeria, down. make sure you check it out. If you're in I the definitely got to try out the deep dish Chicago-style pizza they make there. i seen that menu on uh, the website. <laughs> Yeah, they, they do it all, man. They've been in business, I think, 60 years. I mean, I think they're third generation now. and The guy works his tail off. They're nonstop. That's their life. So good for them. And they're they're doing it. They help me out as well. So You're already getting hellos. Yeah. <laughs> man, they're super popular. Uh, it's, it's crazy how much love that uh, everyone in your gym has for each other. Like, you, Mackenzie, Sean, anytime any one of you guys are on, the whole family's all like talking about like it's really good to see that. As like a small gym, you guys really, really look out for each other. And that, that's a great thing to have too. And you're sporting her shirt too. So I like that. Oh well. yeah, I got the uh, exclusive Musgrove shirt on, you know, in store soon, you know. But uh <laughs> no, you have to stick together. If you're in a gym, you've been in it far longer than me, obviously. Like it's like a it's it's a family setting. I mean, we have dinner before you know after the weigh-ins everyone i mean 15 people at the table you have to if you're going in this you know i said on a, a last interview it takes a village for a fighter you need everyone around you to be on the same type of uh idea sets you are to go in there you can't be alone so we definitely push and uh support each other to the fullest so i'm very excited to go to germany with sean i i can't wait so i got my right hand with me so that'll be awesome that's awesome you guys get to go together uh, Mrs. Musgrove, we love our guys. You just got to talk to her a little bit about getting Mackenzie into MMA, and then we'll be all square with her. <laughs> oh, <too>. man. <laughs> I'll try to slip the knowledge through, you know, I'll yeah. see what I can do. <laughs> that's your, that's my awesome nephew. Man, the, the, a lot of love for you coming through. I love that already. Um, so we started with Germany, <laughs> warm beer in Germany. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think Germany can uh, do some awesome beers. I'm just saying, my brother loves loves the beers in Germany, so uh, he's a pretty pretty. Yeah, but I think it's different warm ups too. <laughs> so, um, how did you get invited to fight for the ISKA in Germany? What's it like to represent your country? About a year ago, when Sean went to Turkey for ISKA. Um, that, that was the goal. I was like, I have to get in. So the whole, whole year was the ultimate goal. I mean, obviously titles and experience, obviously, but so I kept reaching out to their internal guys after every fight, I'm sending them footage. And finally around maybe July, I was in, they were like, you know, message Mike Walters, who's out of ISKA. We talked and he looked at my resume. He's like, you're in. So I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm more than excited. That's the only thing I didn't do in my amateur career. I got to, you know, travel, go to nationals through bots. And I, f I fought guys from international. I fought guys from Ireland and, you know, but that's the one, the one last thing I want to do in the amateurs. So, um, you know, that's going to, that's going to do it. I'll cap it off. I'll be very excited. So after you win the title over there, you come back and turn pro. Is that, uh, is that the goal? Yeah. Yes. Um, sooner rather than later, probably like one more fight. You know, I'd like to do one more K4 fight. If I could get on, on Keith one more, that would be, that'd be awesome. So we know a guy, I'm sure we can get you on October 28th. If you'd like to fight. Uh, it's, it's four days after Germany. I'll be all, I'll be all beaten up, you know, <laughs> oh, he, maybe. he throws, he throws shows pretty quick though. So the turnaround time's not bad. Yeah. But, not bad at all. And we'd love to have you back, man. Your fights are super exciting. Even when the guy doesn't want to fight with you, you still make it exciting, which is, uh, <laughs> Pretty hard to do, and you did a really good job chasing them down. Absolutely. Uh, do you have sponsor to help you pay for the trip? We just had uh, some other people on that are going, and uh, man, Nate was talking about what a hard time he's having. Uh, he had raising money to to get down there. 
He got a GoFundMe. Oh, page. did he? Yeah. Yeah. We're uh, we're figuring something out right now. I obviously have Sammy's Pizza. I have Buffalo Born Contracting. I have a lot of local businesses around here. Um, we're thinking maybe a fundraiser or something like that. Yeah. But but right now we're we're playing around something. I I have nothing to announce yet though. I do not have a GoFundMe up unfortunately. <laughs> but we're, we'll probably have something up in the next uh, week. It was hard enough to get the passport. They were brutal at the post office. So now that I got that, you know. Plans of uh, securing all the money, so we'll be all right. all right. Keep us in the loop of what you're trying to do, and then whatever you're trying to do, man, we'll, we'll pump that on our social media too. Make sure that you get the word out. Um, right. We don't really know a lot of people, but we know everybody in the uh, martial arts community, so we can at least help out with, with that that part of it. Absolutely. I appreciate that, guys. Seriously, it means a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, we, we love you to death. Like, people come on every time you come on, we have like so many people watching, like we have like double our viewership almost. And that's all for Mike Stevens. So uh, we do whatever we can for you. <clears throat> I do want to get into the FCP fight. I know you, uh, you haven't really talked about this in uh, any kind of social media. Um, I know uh, you, you did an interview. We talked about it before you came on here and they didn't want to talk about it. Well, obviously it's their uh, promotion, but um, I heard you got spit on in your fight. And then, uh, we were talking. I know that's not really true, but I'd like to hear exactly what happened from you. Yeah. Um, first off, FCP was nothing but good to me. I, you know, before I tell the story, I don't want anyone to think I'm, you know, throwing anything at them. They were nothing but professional. The brothers were nothing but professional before and after the whole incident. But uh, it all started at the way in. I, I don't know the kid personally, you know. And uh, I just got social media, and I'm looking, you know, Instagram. He's he's writing. It's going to be my. Uh, a funeral every day there's like a, a clock uh, this kid you know okay you know so i see him i've been doing this a long time so when i see a guy fight i'm either gonna catch you in the bathroom or alone with your without your team to see who you really are because if i come up to you, you got eight guys everyone's you know everyone feels you know tough you know so i caught him in the doorway i shook his hand you know good luck blah 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 nothing but real humble so i thought you know that's who we're going to deal with. We go outside, you know, you do the pre weigh in and then the next way in. And uh, if, if people watched, he tried to do uh, put his like hand in my face. So I pat it down and he's going, I'm here, I'm here. And I, you know, I told him, I said, you've never been here. I promise you never, <laughs> never you know, being cocky, but I, I have a lot more fights and a lot more experience. I'm you've never been here. And he tries to get in my face. I push him back. He goes, I'm ready. I'm, I go, you're not. I go, I promise you, I'm not ready. And all his friends are hooting and hollering. So the next day, uh, you know, you could feel it. Everyone, everyone was pumped about that fight because, you know, he's still talking and all that. And we had a game plan. I, I apologize to Coach Pat, but I, I definitely <laughs> not, I definitely of of the eight fights I've had with him, he's he's you know, exceptional coach. I definitely did not follow the game plan as per se. Um, I, I definitely wanted to uh for lack of a better term, take his head off. And we went in there and uh, I, I basically just bought the whole time, came forward and I, I broke him down. I broke him down. I think I dropped him two, three times with all body shots. Body was weak. He came first round. He slugged with me. And then um, after that, once I get off the stool, you know, I, I, I hop around, man. I got my own little uh, thing going on. Ben Fields, shout out to Ben Fields. He always says, oh, he's feeling himself now, you know, but I feel good. My my cardio is really good for the most part, you know, and when I saw him get off that stool slow, I went, okay, like, we're just going to keep this pace. He can't keep the pace. So, you know, the whole time I'm, I'm clinching and hitting him, I'm telling him, you know, keep, talk now, you know, let's let's talk now because he tried to glove touch me. I, I, I can't do that after all the pushing and, and yelling and so when I stopped him in the third with a body shot, I walked past him. And I said, you know, what, you know, talk now for a better, you know, paraphrasing, something of that sort. And he spit at me, which was, that's, uh, I, I didn't expect that for the most part. So I tried to uh, turn around and I guess charge at him. I don't know. I definitely uh, got hot headed for a split second, but uh, their security picked me up like we were going to prom together. I've never been picked <laughs> up so fast. You know, I went from real, you know, tough guy champion to, yeah, you can put me down now, you know. And, <laughs> uh, they they calmed everything down. 
Um, I think he tried to leave. He went in the like crowd yelling. They put him back in the rain. And then I won. He he stood in front of me and still floods. It was really bizarre. But uh, what are you going to do? A win's a win. Um, yeah, I it, it was a very crazy event, to say the least, you know. But we, uh, we, you know, we dropped them three times. We got everything out of them. So that's, you know, tried to humble them at least. But what are you going to do? Uh, a couple things, man. First of all, <laughs> if you could drop with a body shot and you could spit at someone, you'd probably still get up and fight some, right? Well, if you see the video, like I, I obviously have the video, um, South Towns recorded it. He got up fast, like when I said <laughs> something to him. I'm, you know, I'm not talking bad about the kid, but he got up real fast. So that was, you know, it, it was a crazy scenario. In all my fights, I've never had something close to that but uh fcp's got top-notch security because that guy <laughs> that guy came out of nowhere you know <laughs> so i gotta work on my wrestling skills you know I'm not yeah, yeah i know a place i know a place. yeah I, I know you know i gotta start respecting the ground game because <laughs> and he picked me up like i picked my kid up i was like wow bro. damn but man. what are you gonna do you know fight another day we put on a great performance and and we look good doing it so on to Germany and the kids old news, you know, I, yeah. I, to, to young fighters out there, don't, don't act, you know, fight. That's it. People are going to notice you without the talking, without all the cockiness, you know, there's no reason for it. When you go up the range, it's a different story. You're getting paid tons and tons of money. It's a little different, but don't up the range, keep your head down, you know, fight. <laughs> and that's it. You'd be all right. Uh, to me personally, I think it's entertaining when, um, when people sell the fight like that, like I would have been entertained by him. Like if he's really humble in the bathroom and then like, he's yeah. cool after the fight, like that's one thing, you know, but like, for sure. It's diff like, so if he's just like shitty in front of everybody, like the wins, everyone's watching, you know what I mean? Like mm. I kind of get that, but I don't understand. Like after the fight, it's already over. Why would you, there's nothing left to prove, especially if you lost. Like yeah. it only makes you look terrible. I don't understand yeah. that part of it. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think many people do. His um his coach Darnell Parker, he's an MMA fighter out of I think Rochester, maybe he's an MMA champ, very stand up guy. He de-escalated the situation after we got out of the rain. There was a lot of a uh, lot of tension. We thought something was going to go on after the fight because you know people people get into it, I guess you know. But he came up to me and calmed it down. Very very humble guy. De-escalated everything. Yeah, there's definitely a difference from what you said to what I said, for sure. That's <laughs> without a doubt, you know. But it, it got crazy. Attica got a little crazy, you know. That's good. Uh, uh, it's exciting. And it's good because nothing bad happened, too. I like that you um, you sent your, your mom and your girlfriend out of there. That was uh, awesome of you, too. Like, some people wouldn't even think about that. They're like, oh, I remember with that guy. They weren't worried about their family. It just goes to show what kind of guy you are. That Like, that's the first thing you said when we're talking about it off air. So, I was super oh, impressed by that. Like it, it didn't really come across because we got, we got, we talked about this before we came on air. Cause I just want to make sure it was okay with Mike to talk about everything that we're talking about. So uh, we're used to like what was on there and what wasn't on there. And I just want everyone to know what a stand up guy he was. The first thing he says, like, man, I tried to get my mom, my girlfriend out of mm -hmm. there. And that was the very first thing he said about it. And I was like, so impressed by that earlier on when, when we were talking, I just want to make sure that that gets out there too, because dude, people need to know what kind of guy you are. Oh, I appreciate hey Mike. that. Yeah. Huh? Hey, Mike, was that a K1 fight? Real uh, yeah. Fight? Yeah. Because I, I saw you. So I saw you throw the knee and hit him. And um, I guess the ref, the ref were breaking it up. You heard him big time. Yeah. The last three fights have been Muay Thai. I don't want to let go of the clinch. So <laughs> it wasn't on the ref. It's definitely on me. Uh, yeah. You know, I train with Doyle and all of them are all Muay Thai practitioners, you know. And I, I did not want to let go of that clinch. And uh, he, he he was right for making us let go. But, you know, you live, you learn. But, yeah, back to what you said, you got to get mom and, and the family out because we thought for sure it, it was going to get a little scrappy. So first thing I did, I found my mom and them, put them out the back, and then, then got everyone together just in case. But, you know, happily nothing happened. And we were able to, you know, both both sides get out of there in one piece, you know. Yeah, he was rolling with the South Town guys too. He gave you guys a huge shout out too. Right, He's like, yeah. you know, the South Town guys, they got your back. So, like, that was oh, a roster here too. Without a doubt, the whole the whole group, the the Duffy crew, you know, 
yeah. a bunch of tough Irish kids, man. Rep Malone, <laughs> Rob Smith, the the whole nine. I'm forgetting any names. Even Jen Duffy, the wife. They're yeah, they're ready to go to war for you. I mean, I didn't even have to wave them over. I think I just gave you know Brett Malone a nod, and he was great nuts to me. So <laughs> they're very. They're very stand-up guys, you know. I got to train with them a lot. I mean, Brett even comes to our gym at 7 a.m., you know. Damn. After hard sparring, he'll run it near my house. I mean, they're they're about it. And they're they're winning fights and they're they're getting even better. I mean, Brett Falone dominated the kid, you know. Yeah. I, I was at to- Primo's wedding and there was like a fight. So I don't know if you know Primo or not, but like he even has wedding their fights. That's how rough these guys are, man. They're uh, some serious <laughs> dudes. <laughs> They're a different breed in South Buffalo. I've I've only been out there. It reminds me of the falls a little bit, but they're they're different, man. They're very different. I'm happy to be friends with them, you know, that other than falls, you know. Oh, we're gonna fall a little behind in uh, comments, but Mackenzie jumped in. She's like, Mike, you're my biggest inspiration. That's a lot coming from her. Her knee game is uh on point, as you saw at K4. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, without a doubt. You know, she's, she's, I mean, her and Sean are family. She's like my little sister, you know, and uh, it, it's uh, kind of sucks what happened with that fight that it was a no contest, you know, and all that. I, I agree. What do you think about how good she looked? I think she looked great. I think she needs to fight like that every time. I think uh, she was calm. It's it's different with women fighters. I've never trained with women fighters in boxing. We didn't have any women in my gym, you know. So it's different, like the nerve, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. So I've never really seen women fight till I got into kickboxing. She was calm, demeanor, she had a killer type thing going on, and she went right for her. And, you know, she grabs onto you, you're not getting away. I didn't see the shot personally. It's nothing against the promotion, but it is what it is. I'd like to see a rematch and run it back, you know. I'm Happy. not sure that girl ever wants to get in a ring like ever again, dog. I think I think we can just leave it at not running it back. We I, I don't know who's who won that fight. Like yeah. whatever the whatever the, the the official rules is, everyone knows who won that fight for real. Yeah, we'll call it is what it is, right? <laughs> I, I don't think you could pay that girl to get back in there. I uh right. I, I don't That's know funny. that that would ever happen. Um, is there, why didn't that guy get suspended? That guy should definitely be suspended for that. I, I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure they got him out of there. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't know the aftermath cause I haven't talked to them like that. You know, those guys are all, you know, they're, they're top class guys. Joe wall, my, all those guys in ISK are good guys. So I don't know yeah. what happened. Maybe he did, you know, I kind of left it at that after that happened. I think I messaged one of them just to make sure, hey, I just want to make sure there's no trouble. They're like, you did nothing wrong. Oh, you got, six day, uh, you got six day suspension. You see, he's quick with it. This guy, this this Joe Walls, he's he's on it. He's a very sharp guy. See, I didn't know. I didn't pay attention to it. So, <laughs> see there. Thank you. That makes me happy to know that you guys did. You, I, we appreciate you watching the show. But I appreciate even more that you jumped in and, and you shot us out. What happened? That's awesome. Uh, so, like, before I, we get off this topic, I want to um, just make sure that everyone knows that the Abid, uh, Muhammad and Bubba or whatever, they, they don't have anything to do with the suspensions or anything. They just run the show. So the only thing they can do is have security. So it's, it's no – it was never, ever a shot at FCP. We just had on um, – we just had on uh, on the last podcast, everyone was just saying what – how much that uh, Bubba did for him to get him to to fight and take care of everybody. So it was never a shot at uh, FCP, and I know that. And I just want to make sure, like, because I work for K4, it's not like I was uh, shutting down FCP no. or anything. I just want that to be 1,000% clear, too. No, so they, I just they, hated they, that they that happened to you because you're a great guy, you know. And I was yeah. enraged at the action itself, not uh, not the promotion or yeah. anything else. No, they were they were excellent to me. Ska, I mean, I I never come on here to talk one promotion up and down. They they were excellent to me. Bubba and his brother were awesome. Like I said, Iska, uh, obviously they took action. I I just didn't know, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, no, they're they're all they're all great guys, and you know, I I like working with different promotions and seeing. And it was cool. We we're out in Attica, out you know, outside. It was uh, the small town. They loved it. I think the announcer came on a horse. I mean, it was it was <laughs> it was different. It was country, but it was cool. It was a good experience, you know. 
Dang, your Patrick's a crazy savage, dude. That's his name. Yeah, he came yeah. out with a horse and like an orange, like I, I don't know what it was with an orange hat. I was like, this guy's just he's he's on a different level. I'm not I'm not on yet, you know. <laughs> so it, it was it was a good experience all in all. You know, some drama here or there, but you know, is what it is. We just wanted to fight before we went to you know Germany and tune up a little bit, basically, and we got to. Good. How did you feel in the fight? Like, I know you said that it was something like you've never, uh, you never did before. You never didn't follow a game plan. Were you like, did it take you out of your game plan? Is that like a, a future uh, thing that opponents might do to you now? No, uh, never. Maybe you should let that out of the bag. No, I, I felt focused. I watched the fight back. I'm more critical on myself maybe than many people are, you know, very critical. I, I thought my hands look fast and all that, but, uh, I usually I fight a, not a little back, but I fight like boxer puncher, walk him down, and I, I just wanted to be in his face. I, I wanted to see what he had, and he, you know, didn't have much power for me once I took his first shot, and that kind of just took it over. I just wanted to, you know, beat the kid down and, and humble more or less, you know. So that 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 became the plan, and that's it. they they can do that the wings if they want, you know. That they're they're more than welcome to that's how they want, you know, but. We're we're still gonna be on it. So <laughs> I love that. Uh you're so confident too. It uh it shows a sign of how many fights you have. It, it's not like that fake confidence where like guys come on, they're like, oh I'm gonna fuck them up. You're like, you don't know, dude. Like I got a lot of fights. I I've seen this before, I've been down this road. Like, right. I know what's gonna happen in here. I watched the tape, like calm, cool, very professional. Absolutely. Well, you you're you're a veteran yourself. You already know it's a, it's a different person when you you get in that realm, you know. When my hands get wrapped, that's when I know it's it's a real thing, you know. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm back there just you, you would think I'm just hanging out, you know, laying back, just resting. Once the hands get wrapped and signed, it it, it turns something on, you know. But what are you gonna do? I'm hey, a little Mike, different. What made you get into kickboxing? What'd you say? What made you get into kickboxing? Oh, I uh, I got into it by accident. More, um, I came back from Charlotte. I was out of shape, overweight. I didn't fight for a few years. I was probably like 190, which for me is big, you know. And uh, I started kickboxing. It wasn't far from where I lived at the time. Just to like, I don't know, hit the bag, get in shape. I met Pat, and he's like, you want to do a fight, you know, training. It was during COVID, too, so really getting it in. And uh, I took one fight. I thought it'd be one last fight, you know, and we won and it's seven, eight fights later, you know, we we're, we're going strong and fighting the way it is, man. Once you get into it, you're at least for me, my second stint doing it, I guess I get invested, almost addicted in a weird way. Like it's 24 seven. It's all I do. You know, it's all I think about when I, when I get into it. So I can't just, do I, I guess I just can't do a fight and walk away, you know, but the results have been good. So we got to just keep it going. You know, it's, it's different though. When I got into kickboxing, I was a boxer and not being ignorant. I didn't think much of kickboxer MMA. That's just coming from a different realm. You know, I'm like, why well, yeah, are they're nothing? I got kicked in the leg the first time. I was like, Oh, this is real. <laughs> this is really, this is very real. You know, cause you have a white uh, stance as a boxer. Cause you don't have to worry about that. And you can generate more power, but uh, right. Yeah, the first few months was hell on earth. It was terrible because they knew just to kick my lights out, you know. But uh, yeah, it was a learning experience, but I'm happy I got into it. It, it really it, it helped me meet a lot of great people and, and honestly changed my life. I think having that discipline back in my life and having that type of schedule and on to something, it, it keeps my uh, head straight, you know. Do you still have a big love for boxing? Would you ever get back in and really start boxing again? Maybe you run a pro it, boxing too? It gets dabbled around me here or there because we train out of a boxing gym. We train with, you know, like I, I spar a lot of their boxers too when I get ready for fights. Like this kid with South Paul, I was sparring Adonis Alchemy. He was, I think, number three in the nation uh, last year or the year before, 175. So we have like some legit guys in there and they dangle it around with me. I, I think about it here and there, you know, it, it could happen, you know. <laughs> So we'll see. I, I love boxing. That's my that, that's my first love. I, I grew up watching. That's all I watched growing up. My grandfather. It's all he put on. So Lennox Lewis, Klitschko's, Kelly Pavlik. I was that like 
That's all he watched all day, every day. My uh, Uncle Ed, he, he has the old VHS tapes. You know, they probably have a little dust on them now, but we, we'd we watch Willie Pep, Lewis. So I always grew up watching bots. I didn't watch MMA until a few years ago, you know. And the sports evolved heavily. I mean, it's it's a lot different, you know. But it could, it could happen, you know. We'll see. Every time we talk about boxing, your eyes light up just a little oh. bit more than they normally are, man. So I thought I sneaked that one in. I feel like you uh, you want to get back in there and do just a little boxing too. Uh, we're we're focused on the kickboxing, <laughs> but I, I love it. I got into the boxing by Edson too when I was at Victory. They had both sides, and I would go in there and hit the bag. You know, I'm young, and I ran into a trainer there. His name's Ross Thompson. He was uh, he ended up fighting Fernando Vargas for world title. Yeah, uh, Ross the boss. Yep. Ross the boss. Yep. Yeah, Ross yeah. the boss. And uh, you know, Ross fought one forty seven, so he's older now. He's probably around forty. You know, he's out of shape. He's heavier. And I'm I'm a punk kid. You know, I wasn't as respectful as now. <laughs> I go, you know, I walk up. I think I'm tough. You know, I'm seventeen, sixteen, whatever I was at time. I go, you want to spar? And he goes, uh, I'm a pro boxer. And, you know, you see guys at any gym, I can do this. I'm pro. Yeah, okay. Hop in. <laughs> and he, he, I couldn't hit him with a handful of rice. You know, he was, <laughs> he uh, definitely humbled me. And then, you know, we were talking. I looked his bots rack up. He's like, I could train you. And I go home. I look his bots rack. He fought my favorite fighter of all time, Kelly Pavlik. My grandpa saw, and he's like, "You go back to that gym. You have that guy train you." You know, <laughs> yeah. that's that's how I got into it. The rest is history. He was taking us national trips. I mean, he he came to my house for dinner. I slept at his house. They were like family. Same same team I have now is like family. They've been to my house a hundred times, more or less. That's how it has to be. But yeah, it's it's funny how you get into things for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Like it was crazy how many times our paths have crossed. We never sparred until you came to the gym. Like. This is amazing. No, we're, it's, it, we it's were in the bizarre. same building at times, and we still never trained together until uh, like a couple weeks ago. That's yeah, crazy. I know. I uh, I had the same with um, I might butch his last name, uh, Ali Retzhepi. Yeah, I, I didn't spar him till like four months ago when he fought Yarka. That's the mm -hmm. first time like we knew each other. Like I knew who he was. Yeah, and we knew all the same people, and I finally was in a room with him alone, or he's walking by me. I go, it's. It's nice to meet you after 10 years and we were chopping <laughs> it up and we got some good work in. He's uh he's an animal. Dude, he's that kid animal. is probably the best athlete in the world. Like he he can do so many things with his body that normal people can't. Yeah, my uh my buddy knows him from when he was a kid. I I, I think they grew up in the same part of Kosovo or Albania or, or Albania. that type of area. Yeah, Albania. Yeah. And he said he was like I, I this this could be false. He's like he's a super athlete. He's like he's walking on his hands at three. He's like the kid could do it all, you know. He's older than him too, so who knows, you know. But yeah, he was he's a monster. A, a lot of those WNY guys, when we go there to spar, get hard sparring, they they have a few animals over there, you know. Yeah. Man, uh watching him and Pat Mix go at it in MMA is something you should buy a ticket for. Those guys oh, really? are yeah, phenomenal. I mean like Pat's much, much better now, but back in the day, holy cow, they were like neck and neck. And then you can see like what training with the best and the most elite people in the world can do to you because when Pat comes back, there's no one on Pat's level now, man. It's, it's so different. I just met him too like six months ago. I, I won a title for Castro Combs in November, so almost a year. And uh, he gave me the bell and shook my hand. And then I saw him before the K4 car in April. And I talked to him. He's he's a cool dude, man. So yeah, nothing but respect for him. And I'm I'm happy he's doing what he's doing. You know, he's, yeah. he looks awesome. Anyone can win a million dollars, man. That's all we gotta do. Just go That's there. That's crazy. God beat bless somebody him. up. Right, right. <laughs> so he makes it look easy, just like you do. <laughs> yeah, he does good. I I told my family, I go, I just gotta get punched in the face to go to Germany. I go, I'm not gonna go there for anything else. You know, <laughs> I'm so I'll take it. But yeah, he's he's a monster, man. I watched that uh, flying knee. That's the first fight I saw of him. Like I've seen highlights of him tapping people because I know he's yeah. uh, lethal on the ground. But I'm watching the fight. I'm expecting a takedown. He just put him right to sleep. I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, Stop can man. swing too, man. That guy can crack. The guy he knocked Rufiano. out. Yeah, Rufian Stotts. Oh my god, he's got <laughs> some serious power in his hands. He's an awkward. He's got that real awkward style, but he's got power, you know. Yeah, absolutely. 
For sure. Those are the most dangerous guys. Those guys that like move all funny, but they hit so hard. Like, because they're awkward and it's weird yeah. to go up against them. Because you're used to going up the guys who all fight orthodox, you know, fight a, a certain system. This guy's yeah. moving all weird, you know. Yes, yeah, hands are all over the place. He does yeah. things with his leg. Like those guys are like in MMA. It's even worse. Like at least in like kickboxing, they, they do traditional stuff. You don't have to worry about like crazy shots and just mm-hmm. another whole level, another level of like takedowns and like other shit you got to worry about. You'll know. Um, you'll know when you're a pro in the UFC. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. We'll see. One step at a time, you know. We'll tackle Germany first. That's that's yeah. what we're looking forward to. It's gonna be funny. It's all gonna happen because you got lifted up by security guard. I, I won this UFC title because the security guy lifted me up once at a fight that guy spit on me. I, I felt I felt weightless. I know I'm only 160, but I've, I've never been lifted like that, you know. He put me right against the fence. I, I was like, all right, all right, I'm done. I'm done. Just just let go of me, man. I, I didn't know who he was at first, you know. I just see a guy grab me. I was like, oh, I'm in trouble, you know. Man, but, it's good you hey, didn't think he was someone from the other guy's team. Yeah, well – some guys did at first and it, it could have wanted, you know, it could have got worse, but I think everything got calmed down. I mean, ISK calmed that down. And if you watch the video, they were in that ring in, in seconds. I mean, I got grabbed in a split second, but they separated everything. They did a, a wonderful job de-escalating that because different promotions that could have turned into a, a, a brawl that would have, you know, people are getting hit and then, God forbid it goes into the stands. You know, a lot of stupid stuff could happen a split yeah, second if you don't have someone controlling the situation. And that's their job, you know, 10 out of 10. That guy needs a promotion, head of security. He needs to be head of security now. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Ray? My apologies. I'm going to say, how you feel about bare knuckle fighting? Those guys are crazy. I've, I've <laughs> went to it. I've, uh, I went to it in uh, Salmanca. I almost pronounced okay. it wrong. My grandfather used to call Sal Monica. I almost, yeah. almost called it Sal. Go, what's this guy talking about? You know, but <laughs> I went out there and we we're in the front, and these guys are it's crazy. That um that one guy who uh runs Gladius, he does it. I'm pretty sure he does pretty well at it. That Matt Phillips, I think he just yeah. went to Britain. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I want to know the percentage of how many people break their hands or like is the damage really worth the, the money on it? I mean. How many of those guys bust up their hands or get bad cuts? I mean, I don't watch it too much. I've only watched a few, you know. I uh, There's been a lot of bad cuts. I don't know how many people break their hands. Probably quite a few, I would imagine. I mean, I, right. I, I can't only have imagine balls. not breaking your hand every fight. Yeah, so, I mean. You, gotta, I, you definitely got to watch out where you hit that. You, you know. You yeah. Yeah, and you're swinging for the fences probably. I, I assume you're getting a ridiculous aden- uh, adrenaline dump. I just saw MMA bare-knuckled. Um, what's his name? Mazadolf has some yep. like, bare-knuckle. Yeah, Masvidal, yeah. Yeah, these guys These guys are different. They're different. They're definitely different. I got a when few I started, buddies. That's how it was. Them. Dude, we started with – I was back in the day with no gloves. Like, back in the day, it is a lot different. Like Really? Yeah, it's completely different. It was no, way better than ground pound people back in the day. Yeah, you guys, you guys paved the way, paved yeah. the way. That's for sure. That's a whole different breed. I I wore boxing gloves, so kicking to me was foreign. So now you're telling me take you know take the gloves off completely. I'm, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm a big wuss or something. I grew up a little a little entitled in the sport, but <laughs> it's it's selling. It's getting big though. I see it all over my feed now that I have social media, like bare knuckle yeah. and all that, you know? So we'll see right now. Just kickboxing. No, <laughs> no, no boxing right now. No bare knuckle and, and definitely not no <laughs> MMA. Cause those, those guys are a different breed too. I think your coach is losing your mind. These guys are trying to get into MMA and bare knuckle boxing. What is going uh, on? No. I told the last <laughs> interview, I got a ground game of a toddler, so I'm not uh <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I can admit when I'm wrong. I'm I'm not an MMA guy. I, I respect it, you know, but yeah. those those guys are a different breed. They just had a kid fight for a title in NFCP. I said his name last time. I'll say it again, Mason Lewis. And this oh, kid's yeah. wrestling. Oh, he fought on uh dude, yeah. his wrestling is legit. I mean, it's I mean, I'm you know, I'm a casual, but dude, he just lifts them right up, spins them a few times, and slam like uh and my mom's in the crowd. I don't want that to happen. I mean, we'll keep it. We'll keep it standing. I like it that way. You know. 
Yeah. Mrs. Musgrove says no MMA for you either. She, I'm not. Yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree 100. Like your family is so good to you. Yes, thank you, Mackenzie. I agree. Yeah. You should definitely see, MMA. Yeah. She's yeah, anyways, a bad, she's we, a bad sponsor made the Lewis. Shoulder. We gave him two hundred dollars. Uh, K Man's Corner sponsoring the K Four Fighters. Now we're trying to. Uh, I think we're gonna have a thousand dollars for the next event. Last time we. Uh, uh, yeah. We gave away $800. I gave away like 200 of my own, and then we raised uh, $600. So we raised money. We give away like Friday night and stuff, and we sponsor them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mason Lewis is the reason. Uh, so I gave him $100 because uh, we only started with $400. And he's oh, man, thank you so much. We came. I only came with $13 in my pocket. I don't even know how I was going to get home. And I was like, oh, right. shit. You know, so I went out and I raised up another $400, and I gave him another 100 So I gave him 200 yeah. That's so awesome, uh, man. K-Man's Corner sponsored athlete. And uh, Mackenzie was trying to get that knockout money. <laughs> so she was yeah. doubly upset that she uh, it was a no contest. When you win Worlds, go pro and have nothing left to do, MMA. Uh, well, maybe, yeah. you know, it's, I'm good. I'm going to say no, yeah. I'm good. So your fights, those K-4 fights were awesome, what you guys did for the fighters. The fights were awesome. From 45 to 55, you have a lot of fighters – right there i mean you have gabe vega keenan hines you obviously have isaiah cat nick walker like you guys are gonna have a cool little uh almost like a four-man tournament right there and i'm probably forgetting a few names if i am you can fill me in but you you have a lot of good little talent right there like i've, I've talked to nick walker he's a monster you know he's doing awesome Dylan Tharp's obviously to talk quite new. <laughs> what'd you say we were trying to talk Nick Walker into fighting you. He's like, you should go up to 60. You and Mike oh, really? fight. Well, we're we're trying to get down to 55. For this, yeah. um, for Germany, it's either 65 and 55. And I, you know, I fight at 60. I'll do a catchway at 65. But when you go to bigger, um, I guess, bigger events, like when I go to nationals, these guys are sucking weight. Yeah, like I, I don't feel good about going to Germany being 65 when that's I want to get as small as possible because when you go to those tournaments, it's different. These guys are dropping. You're going against, you know, real, real threats. So, you know, it could always happen at 55. I, I could I could walk into 55 for one more fight. I, I would take on all all takers from the area. They're all real talented. I've been sparring with Gay Vega, and uh, that kid's got some – he's got a death touch, you know, yeah. very strong kid. <laughs> Very, very strong kid, you know. So I'm getting a lot of I see all the messages now. See, I'm like an 80-year-old with technology. I'm terrible with it. <laughs> yeah, see, all, all the North Carolina guys have been hitting me up. You know, that'd, that'd be cool to go down there. I love Charlotte. So there might be in the future that's possible. This is uh, you know, a rumor and not that I know anything. There could be some uh out of town K4 fights around in that area at some point. So, um, you know, it might be a good one to get on. We were talking with uh, Aaron, Aaron as well, and uh, like he's from down there too. So that would be good. That would be awesome. I I got a lot of a lot of friends down there. See, there's <laughs> yeah, Gay Vega is a good guy, man. We we had a nice sit down. His coaches are awesome too. I wasn't I wasn't like calling him out like that. I don't yeah. I don't really think that. No, he's an awesome guy. We got to spar, and I was in the same tent as his coaches, so it was it was cool to chop it up with them. They they got yeah. some good fighters there too. Yeah, he's he he can hit, man. He he pats a blow. He doesn't look it, but he's got long arms, so I think he just whips them in. So no, we we watch him knock people dead. Huh? We definitely know he's got some some power. Yeah. We, we call yeah. it K four fights. You can hear those shots when they land too. They're punk. It's like oh, hitting a rock, man. man. No, those fights were good, and obviously the main event was awesome. The main event was great. It's a five-round war for oh, sure, yeah. for sure, how buddy. Did, how did you think the scoring went for the Doyle fight? I, I mean, I obviously thought Doyle won, but I, th I think it was razor close. I don't think in any sense if either of them won, you could call it a robbery or anything like that. I think that fight was back and forth nonstop. I think Doyle took the final probably 30 a minute. I think he wrapped it up again. I watched it live. You know, I would like to watch it again. They got to watch it, but I, I think Doyle went in there and handled business. I, I don't think Ali Jano has anything to be ashamed of either. I think both their stock shot through the roof that night. Oh I yeah. Mean, it was the best fight in Buffalo history. I think so far. It was incredible. Uh, he has nothing to hang his head for, you know, I, I mean, 
And I think Doyle is an incredible fighter. He won Worlds last year, and that guy came in our backyard, and he he came in and he handled business as well. There's there's no – I don't think there's a win or lose in that situation. Obviously, there is in a certain extent, but not as far as what he put in that reign. You know, usually those guys die out third, fourth round. That's when you, you know, championship rounds, you see guys starting to fade. And e either of them weren't going anywhere. And they're both, no, both you know. Finish. We gave both of them $200 as well. Like we sponsored them yeah. for quite a night. Everyone's so like, getting a little money. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got big pockets over there. Man, like we're trying to. So like my whole goal with this is to give exposure to amateur athletes because you guys don't get paid and like. Trying right. to get you guys some money. Like when I fought, I didn't get shit. Like I fought pro, I didn't get that much money, you know. So like I know what the struggle is, and like we're making a few dollars a caveman's corner, and like I get paid to like call fights. I love to call fights. I don't need that money. I can just give that money away. You know what I mean? So um I was like, I'll just give away what I get made, what I make from K4. Like I think that'd be really cool, you know. And then all of a sudden, Ray's like, oh, I'll throw in some money. I'm still waiting for my money, too, Ray, by the way. <laughs> and uh, So then I had to throw in money for Ray. And then, like, other people joined in. And then uh, JCR Transport jumped in um, $250 as well. So then we had, uh, you know, enough to give away uh, a lot of money. And then I heard that story from Mason Lewis. I was like, man, I need to come up with some more money. Like, 13 He showed me his bank account. He's like, I got $13 in this thing. I still got to get home. I'm like, God damn. So, like. I got some more money, like, out of the crowd. Like, I, I went panhandling, but, like, it needs to be done, man. Like, we got to do something for you guys. You, know? I, you ever I get stuck money. here, Mason Lewis? You can stay at my house, but you, you got to spar me all weekend. I, I want to work with you, man. I'd love to work with you guys. So, you you know, you can sleep on the couch, man. I'll let you sleep on the couch, <laughs> but uh, you got to wake up, man. It's not going to be uh, a vacation. <laughs> You're coming to the gym. We'd love to have you. But, no, that's, <laughs> that's the right thing to do. That's – these kids don't realize or, or men more or less, they don't realize like this community. I mean, these kids, they have weigh-ins, you have like entrance music and boxing, even the golden gloves, like how prestigious cause it's been around for a hundred years. You would walk in fight and then get out of the rain. There was no interview or yeah. it was like, you're just lining them up. Like one side, the other side, you fight. Same with nationals. You'd have sits rings and you'd see big talent there. And it's not like they would get treated any different. I saw Shakur Stevens fight in a ring, like diagonal from me and Carissa Shields and like big names. This is before I went to Olympics and they would just fight and then get out of the ring. There was no like, here's money. Hey, here's a spolger. Want to have you on a podcast? That's what's cool about it. It's what's really cool about it. Is that all the exposure you're giving these guys? Give them a chance to get their name out there. I mean, I I finally got social media, and my thing blew up after that fight. Like <laughs> people are adding, messaging me. To my standard, it blew up. You know, yeah. I was like, I gotta finally post a picture. You know, <laughs> I so I'm I'm trying it, but yeah, you guys you guys really look out for the fighters, and I think you you know as you said from your background, and I I know from boxing that wasn't a thing. It wasn't no. a thing to get that exposure. That wasn't, you know, a lot of guys I found out didn't even know I, I bots that I, I've known like high school people and people from back, but they know I kick bots now. Like the, my, my whole city now knows I kick bots, which is wild. I'm like, I've been fighting for years. You guys, have <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff like that. I shared his post. It got like 130 lights. I was, I don't even know 130 people. So I was like, <laughs> But no, you guys on, on all these promotions around this area are doing an, an excellent job right now on keeping a demand, keeping steady fights. It's not just like a one and done promotion. I mean, Keith right away got it back to October. FCP, I believe, is mid November, like right back, you know. That's awesome. These guys have to harvest that opportunity and fight as much as you can. Iron Shipers Iron. You shouldn't fight twice a year. You should yeah. stay in the schedule. It's not it's not a it's not football season where you, you have time off. You're either in it or you're not, you know. I think the best thing about it is that they they spread out the events too. So you, you can stay busy too. They don't try and compete with each other, like, oh, I'm gonna be the twenty eighth. Oh yeah, well I'll be the week before or the week after. You know, there's there's enough time in between the events that you can actually fight in multiple shows, even locally, which is great because when I was coming up, MMA was illegal here, dude. I had to, like, drive to Pennsylvania or Ohio or Canada to go fight. And then, like, Canada stopped. Really? Yeah, like, it was illegal when I was coming up. When I was fighting, even pro, it was illegal. 
So I think I think I remember that actually. I might I, the uh, guy who ran the wrestling for Victory, Don Lilly. Yeah, he, yeah, him and I, Herbert I'm, started the like the first show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like they they uh, pushed hard to legalize. I'm pretty sure like Don's involved in yep. all that. Yeah, I, Don, I, I haven't seen him in years, but he was he was great to me. He was, they ran an awesome gym over there. Yeah, him and Herbert were the best, and uh, they put on TNT. And then, yep. like, it was history, and then it was sort of legal because it was not really illegal, but it was kind of illegal. But they just did it, and then it worked. Yeah. And it eventually got MMA legal here. So, they're like, we owe them a huge debt of credit to, too. Like, Don oh, Lilly yeah. was my manager when I fought, too. So, like, I owe him, like, triple, triple, <laughs> triple gratitude. He's, like, one of the best in the world. Now I work sure. for the commission. For so, sure. I want to jump back into you. We went kind of all over like the place. When you go and fight in Germany, are you fighting K1 or are you fighting Muay Thai? K1. 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 Yeah, we're going to stick to K1. Sean's doing Muay Thai. And uh, yeah, I, I haven't thrown, uh, I got to get into the elbow game. I got to stop fighting uh, <laughs> modified, you know? So, yeah. K1's more up my alley with, you know, kickboxing. I'm, I'm fine with that. I just got to let go of the clinch and. We got about seven weeks to prepare. We obviously got right back into camp. I took a day off and um, took Monday off, and we went right back into it like we never left. And, uh, you know, we're trying to come home with medals. That's that's the only option. We're not trying to go there and say we just competed. You know, I competed. I, you know, I'm trying to come home, both of us, two medals, and, and win the whole thing outright, you know. So training camp never left. So we just had a fight, and we're ready to – make this progress and make this work. So well, it's on, you know. Do you know who who's in your division or you like just go and show up and you've never seen anybody before? It's kind of a blind draw or? I believe, I mean, I got to look. They they send me, the ISK does a good job updating us. It's, it's my fault not reading into everything. I, I've been so busy trying to get a passport. But <laughs> I, I assume... This, this doesn't have to be right. It would be almost like a tournament setting like I had before where everyone weighs in and then they make the bracket and then you find out something like that. I, I would assume I could be wrong. You know, it could already be started, you know, four weeks before this is who you're fighting, you know, which makes it a whole different story, you know, because mm-hmm. I fought in tournaments where I didn't even know who I was fighting. And like an hour before you're fighting this guy. And you don't have no, you're, you're just walking in and you're eyeing them up. Okay. Like trying to see him hit pads. And that was it. You know, it's a big difference from tape studies and watching and, you know, find out who he is. At least nowadays you could uh, look him up on your phone and see if he's got any like YouTube stuff. Like, oh, what's the guy's name? All right. Yeah, this yeah. is what he's going to do. All right. Got his uh, fight go, from yesterday. Uh, they they show everything. I mean, these, you go on someone's Instagram, it's, you, you can get everything. The good and bad. They'll they'll put on their story. Uh, a guy I fought, he put on his story. I was four weeks out from fighting him, and he was in Miami drinking on a boat with girls. <laughs> I go, I go. Well, it's time to run right now. You know, <laughs> these guys show everything, which is it's crazy. You know, I try to stay very uh, hidden. You know, so or you gotta get a bunch of pictures when you're out of camp of you doing fun stuff and just post them while you're really in camp training hard. No one See. really knows. Okay, I'll be mental again. You gotta be careful. You're ahead of you're you're ahead of the curve. You're right. See, I just, I'm only on step one. You know, you, I I thought I played mental games. Apparently, I don't. You know, you, I got I got to come back to the gym and learn. You know. Yeah, I can coach on that part for sure. We're all about the social media, man. Holy cow! Oh man, I am. Yeah excited to see you go represent our country does that mean anything special to you absolutely absolutely i'm so excited i was very envious of sean going last year like i didn't even know i i didn't really know that was a thing in kickboxing or muay thai again i'm new to it and with boxing it's very organized like you can see the rankings and all that so when he went after he fought um giovanni which again that was a hell of a, that was a crazy fight too I don't think you're going to find a boring fight with him, man. I, I think they match him pretty well, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I can't wait. Absolutely. I'm super excited to represent my country. And uh, we're ready. We're going to put everything into this. And it's going to be awesome, you know. So yeah, if I wear so that 
If I wear that U.S. tracksuit for a month, don't judge me, all right? You just let it go for a month. After 30 days, you make fun of me, but... I was no, going to say you got to send us a picture in a track. So you and Doyle, like, uh, we want to, oh, like, we, pump it up and post it, like, here. Just share yeah. it, and then we'll reshare it, man. Like, make sure that gets out there. That's a great image for you. Like, you should be for representing sure. your country and be proud of it. You should wear it for, like, 100 days. Who cares? Like, <laughs> of, of the things to be proud of, that's something to be really proud of. Like, you're going to represent our country, like, all of us. And Absolutely. I couldn't think of a better representative in a combat art than you and Doyle. Like, yeah. It doesn't get better. Two respectful, super awesome guys that are great in the sport. Like, what better representative of the United States is there than you guys? You know, and like, I want to post that on my on my social media. I want to spread the love for you guys. Like, that's really cool. When we get those track suits, I'll, I'll let you know, and we'll we'll put it out there for sure. That that would be awesome. That would be yeah. uh, great. We're gonna have the papers come down and, and write up a story, try, you know, try to get, you know, good exposure out there. And I, I think that's the best thing to have in the paper. I think people love to see stuff like that. You don't see a lot of that in these, these small towns. I mean, we're in Niagara Falls, New York training. You don't, you don't see that too much, you know, so that'd be awesome to support, you know, so we, yeah. we can't wait. It's a great story. Like we want to support it too. There's so much bad shit. Like I was all excited to talk about the spinning stuff. Like, that's a terrible sport story for the sport, but like a great story is like you and the tracks who going to represent our country. And yep. both the stories are just as good. I mean, this is a better story really, because, you know, you can talk about how hard you worked and you're going to represent the country and like how much it costs and you're spending your own money to get there. You have to fundraise to get there. It's not just a fight. You have to work to get there. Then you're Absolutely. there you have to cut weight in another country. It's not an easy task to do. Absolutely. No, we're we're gonna we're gonna die for this in training camp, and, and I'm being dead serious. We're everything's going into this, so we you know we can't wait. And it, yeah, you're right; it's an excellent story. I, I don't think a lot of people realize the amount of dedication that goes into it. It's it's insanity. I mean, everyone wants to be a fighter, you know. Like everyone, you go to gyms, guys do two Muay Thai classes. They want to fight. Yeah. You have no idea. You have no idea the weight cuts and everything, and the injuries, and you know. You're always hurting. Like people go, you're in great shape as you're walking with a limp, you know, <laughs> but that's just part of it. And it's awesome yep. to see all that hard work be put into this and have an opportunity and, and for, you know, a sanctioned by like ISKA to recruit talented fighters and put the team together. Cause it, from what I saw, it looks like they have great fighters on there. I don't know all their names, obviously. I reached out to the kickboxing coach to, uh, I want to go down there and uh, spar, build some chemistry with them. Cause I don't have Pat in my corner and I got to know who's, who's cornering me. I think that's just as big as the fighter in there. You, you got to have a corner that, you know, you can. So I, when I see independent fighters once in a while, I, I saw, you know, I, I see it once every show. I see like one independent guy. <laughs> That's that's a terrible idea. That is not a good idea. Do not train yourself. Um, you yeah. need someone in that corner and to trust. I mean, this guy, he's got to be like your shadow in the gym. This guy's got to be on you. He's not your friend. He's your coach. He's there to push you to the limit. And uh, so I got to get to know this uh, kickboxing coach. I'm going to go down there where uh, he's going to get back and plan something. And I just want to see what we can, you know, work together and, you know, that's about it. Get to know the guys. I'd, I'd love to bring the whole team together for we go and spar or just work. And that'd be awesome to drill with some guys around my weight. So that'd be great. Yeah. Is it hard for you to get guys your weight? I mean, it seems like you have to travel all over the place. Um. Yeah, here or there. We, we find guys. But, you know, I think the best thing about sparring is find different styles, find different, you know. Yeah, at times it can be. But we have a few gyms that we're open to go to all the time. And uh, so right now, not too bad, you know. Usually like 15 pounds over, they're 10 pounds under, and we work yeah. accordingly. Yeah, so. definitely. You guys, you always got to uh, invite to my place, but I got like little guys too. We're all like 45 or so. Well, you got – how how much is Derek weigh? Derek's a 45-er. I'm a 45-er. 45? <laughs> Did he fight yeah, a 45 for K4? Yeah, he fights a 45. How tall is he? Like 6'2". You gotta feed him, man. You gotta let him eat a little. <laughs> I know, like, <laughs> right? I didn't know he was that light. We got good sparring that day. We all worked like we we worked well. It was good drilling. Like I like yeah. stuff like that. I just came from a baptism too. I had to take the little <laughs> suit off and 
kids all dressed up and he was awesome he was just sitting there it was the best yeah he's <laughs> he was awesome we but that, that you know that's what goes into this too seriously like we came from my son's baptism after going to like a you know big town restaurant catering you know i didn't eat a thing it's for my son's baptism you know they got all the goods you know carb yeah. carb heaven you know pasta sausage you know chicken uh-huh. part the whole nine I didn't eat a thing because I knew I had to meet with you. I was like, well, I got to meet Kay, man. I got to get my work in. So that's, you know, and you guys were nothing but accepting. My son comes in an all white suit. I mean, he, he looked like the man and a half, you know, and he didn't yeah. stain it for being three, not staying in all white suit. I mean, yeah. if he could see this hats off to him, you know, but hey. he what's going so on, good. Marty? He was such a good kid, man. Like you got, you can tell you're a good dad too, because your son listened to you and like, your coach was like really good with him. It was awesome to see oh, that. Yeah. As soon as I saw that, I knew like everything I ever heard about you was the truth. And uh, uh, I, appreciate I was, I was that, happy man. to have you in the gym, man. It's like that, just the interaction between your coach, your son, and you. Like that's all well, took. He, and- he was raised at the gym. I mean, there's pictures of him six months in Pat's arms. You know, we he's been in the gym since he was born. I, I got back into it right when he was born, right around COVID, you know. But he's he still comes to the gym. He sits in the corner, or he plays with uh, the one trainer, Kristen's son, and so he's always in the gym. He knows how to behave. So I'm not raising a wild wild child. You're not going to see a lot of crying and kicking and screaming. We're not going to have that here, you know. Got to got to raise a, a decent member of society, you know. But no, I I really appreciate that. That means a lot with the parenting comment, you know. Yeah, no, man. I see a lot of kids. I see a lot of parents and. Like, after you work with kids, like, I run all the kids programs, too, you know what I mean? After yeah. a while, you can tell, like, you can see in, like, two seconds what kind of relationship the parents and the kids have, and you're doing a really, really hell of a good job. Uh, we, we could talk for three hours on some of these parents, because I get I get to see it, too. So, it's yeah. some, some some people are a little different, we'll put it that way, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I raise them the same way I was raised, you know? My, my family's traditional and old school. I mean, my dad's 60 years old. I, I still don't raise my voice. My, my girlfriend left two months ago because he yelled at me and I went behind the chair. I didn't mean to. It's a natural reaction. You know, that's the big one. But that, that's how that's how I was raised. My, my grandfather is big in my life, too. He was a Marine, so he wasn't he wasn't playing any games. When I went yeah. to Nationals one time, quick story, um, Ross and all of us, our car, something happened with our car situation where we couldn't go last second. We're driving to John City, Tennessee. So I go to my grandfather, you know, he lets me borrow the trailblazer. He goes, you can have the trailblazer take to Tennessee. I go, oh, you know, I'm so thankful. I'm, you know, young kid, I'm hungry. I, I want this tournament. He goes, but you come home with a belt. I go, yeah. And he pulled me. He goes, no, I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not, this isn't joking around. Don't, don't come home. You bring it home. And, and I went out there, you know, crazy. I, you know, I stopped both guys. My pop was so happy. So, <laughs> I, I think you need a strong guy in your life. It doesn't have to be a father. It could be a coach. It could be anyone. But you need someone to, you know, to stop you when you're on, basically, you know. Yeah, that's it. And then steer you when you're right, too. Like, you're doing a good job. Let's go. Pick For it up. Sure. Now's the time to finish the guy. And, like, you have that in you. Absolutely. No, Pat, Pat doesn't take it easy on us at all. There's no... There's no favorites. There's no, oh, you know, Mikey and Doyle are going to team you. No, it's it's like they won. He doesn't there, – there's no there's no uh, coddling over there. You know, there's no, no coddling. And guys who come to our gym will tell you the same thing, you know, 7.30 or 7, you know, a.m. Saturdays or 7 a.m. Sundays. There's no time to act wild or have fun. Like, you don't come to that gym, man. I, it's a bad guy, you know. <laughs> he helps us out tremendously. You need someone like that. You can't have someone hold your hand the whole time. You're going in there alone. So we got a lot of pouring in for you. Oh yeah. I got a lot of good people in my corner right now. I got um life life's going very well right now. So we're gonna keep it up. This Germany thing's a blessing. And uh we might we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll have the fundraiser at uh Sammy's or something. That would uh that would that would kick it off the right way, you know. Yeah, we'll and definitely you'd... uh Probably You'd have to come then. If it says Sammy's, you guys got to come. I don't know where Ray so, lives. I'll definitely go. Yeah, I don't know if he'll be there. I got to talk to him. I don't see why he would say no or anything like that. I'm I far guess away, we'll... but I'll make it. I'll do something. I'll make it. I'll make yeah. it. 
We'll have to do something either there, or maybe a legion. We'll figure it out. You have to out. get some healthy food there for us. Well, for me, oh, not Ray. Oh, yeah. All no, right, we're 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 gonna feed you till you blow up, man. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna take care of you, you know. But uh, I can't eat any of that stuff. They give me grilled chicken. That's about it. You know, I can't. I look at the menu, you know. But it's all right. A little diet. I'll bring you a steak or something. See. Take care of me. I take care of you. That's how it should yeah. be, right? <laughs> you got anyone else to uh, shout out besides for Sammy's? I know uh, that that's a big sponsor for you, Sammy's Pizzeria. Uh, okay. Anything else? Uh, Buffalo Born Contracting. It's owned by Louis Destino. He's uh, from Niagara Falls. He runs HVAC company. He's been in it for about 20 years. I mean, he does fantastic work. So the houses are going to get cold in a few months. You're going to need someone to heat that house up, you know, Excellent, excellent work. Um, obviously, my team, my uh, son, Roman, for behaving at the gym, and uh, yeah. my my mother, my father, everyone, you know, my girlfriend, Kayla, for putting up with me during weight cuts. And, uh, oh, I mean, you've got awesome. weight cuts, man. I feel bad for anyone who's in that house because those last two days get – they get <laughs> frightening, you know. You're not the you're not the one to talk to, you know. <laughs> I work in an office. I'm I'm a pound off day of. I keep my head down. I can't I, I can't talk to anyone. I gotta apologize on Monday. I go, I'm sorry I've been quiet. Yeah. You know. But all seriousness, uh everyone who support me and continue to support me. Seriously, we're on a uh, great journey right now and we're going forward with this. So six weeks out, six and a half, we're gonna go to Munich and we're gonna do everything that we've been saying we're gonna do. And I'm super excited and thank you for you know full contact for K4, um, Rhett's Thompson's promotion, Vermont, all, all the promotions, cash cones, who's been nice enough to have me on their um, shows in the last year and let me build up and, and keep this going. I, I really appreciate that. Everyone's been nothing but good to me, and I, I want to keep those relationships strong, you know, there and so forth. So I appreciate the podcast. So I, uh, I really yeah, appreciate like you guys. I got one, one last question for you. Is your HVAC guy uh, residential or is he a uh, business? Uh, he does both. He does residential and business. He does awesome, house. Cool. He, does, he does them all. So I, I could shoot you his number. He's great, great guy. Yeah, Good definitely shoot with. me his number, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll shout him out, and I'll give him like give his information for everyone that needs. Like, uh, you know, you always hear that someone needs. Oh, I need a guy. I need a guy. You know, like I want to have guys to give people to to help out fighters. So I want to make yeah, sure that we, I can pass that along. So, oh yeah, send it to Ray or send it to me. Like we'll, we'll make sure that we, we shout that out every now and then too. For sure, guys. No, I appreciate that. He'll appreciate that too. I'll shoot the number after and all that. And yeah, he's he's great to work with. So won't awesome. be disappointed. But I appreciate it, guys. Seriously. We had an hour talk. I didn't know it's 10 p.m. I didn't I didn't get my meals ready for tomorrow. See, I'm I'm screwing my diet up already, you know. But no, seriously, guys, we'll talk again. I really appreciate this. All right. Yeah. And uh we Thank gotta you, have you on after you you win a tournament too, or to yeah. fight or whatever it is, since you're not even really sure what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely you know we'll 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 come back with a a good podcast maybe doyle will be alongside me it'd be cool a little double yeah we gotta have you guys on the oh yeah it'd be awesome so i'd be excited but thank you guys i really appreciate it man it's a great platform thank you sir it up. No, it's always had uh always a pleasure having you, mike thank you so much for your thank time you, we appreciate you more than uh you appreciate us i'm sure and hopefully yeah. we get some training before you leave I was just about to say that. Yeah, I would love to. Sunday would would work like last time, but we'll yeah, keep. Yeah, we're there every Sunday too. So I got Derek, I got Cam, I got a couple guys. I got some newer guys too, but like I got two guys that are like you know decent to give you work. Plus, you know me. Absolutely. See, that's yeah. three now, so we're gonna be yeah. all right. But all I right. appreciate it, guys. You guys have a wonderful night. All right. You as well. So, Thank buddy. you for all your time, man. You. Talk to you soon. Absolutely, guys. Mike Stevens has left the building. What a guy he is, man. He's, Dude, a true like he's got some crazy eyes. You know what guys Yo, he's, fighter he's, when you look at their eyes and they look all crazy? Like, sad. Yeah, he's a fighter. You look at him like, yeah, he's a fighter. Yo, it's super cool, too, because his coach, Pat, like, they came in, and we were sparring kind of light, not really, like, killing anybody. And then his coach, right. like, his Pat was like, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And then, <laughs> dude, like, our spar was good, like. Cause I'm, I'm trying to uh, like teach my guys I don't need to kill everyone every time you spar. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, right. Like it was good, and we got good work. Nice control so, sparring. Uh, yeah, it was. It was supposed to be like um, so like we drilled for like an hour and fifteen minutes, and then we just did like controlled sparring after that. And uh, man, it was it was some good rounds. And then uh, we.
we can we always go like super hard like but usually i like to get the the you know like regular paying members out of the door before we go like you know like fighter hard gotcha you don't want to get a paying members away <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he missed again. He missed that talk, Austin. Sorry, Doc. You know, it's ah! so you can go back and rewind. You missed it. it, Austin. You missed it. Yeah. Or you can subscribe on YouTube and check it out right there. <laughs> he missed oh. It. oh man, what a yeah, Mike Seaman's the real deal. He's the real deal, man. I wish you got you didn't come in to spar with your cousin. Listen, listen, I'm coming with Mike Steven. If Mike Steven come in, um uh next sunday this sunday coming I, up i don't know i'll definitely go doing. yeah i'll definitely go well i'll go next sunday spar i want to spar with some people yeah definitely uh i'm gonna post the youtube link in there right now give me like uh 10 seconds <clears throat> Hey, Vega, I can't believe you're not subscribed to me what is up with this dog <laughs> how are you not subscribed to this <laughs> what is wrong with Gay Vega? I thought he was our dude. <laughs> oh shit, that's the wrong one. Yeah. Sorry, hang on. That's the other link. I apologize. Give me like 10 seconds. I gotta go back and click on it again. Here we go. This is the correct one. I'm sorry. There we go. That's the YouTube Captain K Man Dens. I think you put at in K Man's corner too, and it should pop up. Yeah, it should. It, yeah, if you put K Man corner, it, it will pop up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can find out. I'm going to put together the compilation of me kicking in the balls too. Oh, come on. <laughs> From the old days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you're getting called out, Ray. All right. You come Sunday, I'll spar with your punk ass. <laughs> I just fuck with you. <laughs> Ray, come on, Austin, Ray come, to... come, come, come in um, Sunday. Ray won't be there. You, whatever you say, it doesn't matter because Ray's not going to show up. <laughs> he said he's coming Saturday for comp team for his cousin. He won't even come in for his cousin. He's not coming in for you. Come on, come on, come on, Austin. <laughs> Why be fighting a twenty fiver? You can hit him like Dorian. He's gonna be all fucked up. <laughs> Austin's tough, dude. He got Taze to come. I know. Outside. I know Austin's tough. I know that. Yeah. His jujitsu yeah. suck, but he's a good his stand up. We were, we were rolling. I was being a little bit nice, not super nice. But I was being nice. I had his back. I wasn't gonna choke him. And he looks up at the clock. He's like, "I'm gonna tell everyone I didn't get tapped out by Caveman." I'm like, oh, that was the wrong thing to say. Tap him. <laughs> but, you know, it was fun. I'm not, I'm going to be out of town for work for a couple weeks, and Austin didn't get fucked up. No, I said no Dorian got fucked up. Dorian got, Dorian got fucked up. Yeah. So Dorian was sparring a guy that was uh, 300 pounds like, or some shit like that. Yeah, 300 pounds, and he got concussed. Remember, that's what we were talking about. Maybe I said your name instead of Dorian, but I thought I said Dorian. Did I not say Dorian? Uh, well, I guess I guess you said kind of like you hinted like Austin, if me and him a spar, since I'm bigger, he would get hurt or some shit like that. Oh, okay. yeah, maybe. But I was I was really making fun of Dorian getting lumped up. I'm sorry if I came over like I was saying that you get beat up. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, yeah, no, Austin, stand up. Austin stand up is good. No, I know you're not Dorian. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm boneheaded. <laughs> oh. You can't 
can't write awesome. jokes any better than that. I <laughs> just let it rest. All right, Ray. We will. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back Sunday with uh, with the old crew. But Ray forgot it was a holiday weekend, so we'll yeah. Go. Yes, sir, we could do. If we can't get no, if we can't get no big name this uh, Sunday, uh, we probably do like a Sunday fun day thing. Yeah, or, just or, hang out or, with the fans. We'll, yeah. we'll be on Sunday no matter what. But um, right. If we're we're gonna try and get Coleman on, but we're not sure that we're gonna be able to get him with the Labor Day weekend. Right. Yeah, I, I forgot about the holiday. Fuck. <laughs> you can tell Ray hasn't been a real working man in a long time. <laughs> he just pretends to go to work. He's like, oh, you need some of that? I got some of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before I get you arrested, Ray, I'm going uh, yeah, yeah. to get out of here. Have a good yeah, night, guys. Week. Thank you for watching the show. Mike Stevens is a goddamn beast. Yo, yo, K okay, I can't wait. If we have a party at Sammy's Pizzeria, I'm definitely going. <laughs> I know, dude. Like, as soon as you said that, your eyes lit up. You were so yeah. happy. I'm going to bring try out that, I, I definitely want to try out that Chicago deep dish pizza they're making over there. Yeah, I'll bring a steak and me and him will split a steak. We help you. <laughs> All right, peace. All right, peace out.